three years ago, if you cast your minds back to 2014, we were in the midst of the horrific revelations about the extent of the abuse perpetrated by Jimmy Savile against children. And in the midst of that, Theresa May, as the Home Secretary, was setting up an inquiry whose purpose was to look at those historic cases in order to learn lessons for the future and make sure that the systems that were in place that enabled that abuse to happen couldn't continue to persist in the present day. And I had found evidence that in the past, uh, Tory whips had um, used um, allegations uh, and knowledge of sexual abuse, uh, affairs, child abuse, a whole host of different revelations about people's private lives in order to demand loyalty from their members of parliament. And I took those concerns... So they're blackmailing people, effectively? Essentially using their position of power in order to make MPs vote with the government. OK. And I, I took those concerns to Theresa May on the basis that I see no evidence that the system has changed in that time and that I think potentially... But she saw no evidence in, in what you submitted. Um, she, she said that the rumours were not true and her whips were under clear instruction to report suspected wrongdoing to the police where appropriate. And the trouble is that even this week, her former Director of Communications said in a TV interview that it was common knowledge around Westminster that whips use information about MPs' personal lives in order to ensure that they vote that the right way. common knowledge to you, Edwina, in your days as an MP? I've, I've certainly heard it. And uh, I've heard it from all political parties and it very often refers to uh, all kinds of misbehaviour. Uh, but I've also heard it the other way around, which is the Whip's office will attempt to help somebody, uh, help somebody perhaps who's got a, a gambling problem, uh, help somebody who's got an alcohol problem, and indeed they need to do that rather more. But, uh, I, would, I would really contradict this idea, or challenge the idea, that somehow the House of Commons and the House of Lords are, are, are rife with it. Uh, particularly in the Commons, most of the time, they're, they're, they're interested in politics. That's what they do. They are the most boring people. Well, they do a lot of socialising as well. They do a lot of late nights. They're away from their families. There's a lot of drinking going on from what, all the stories that are coming yes, out now. But also, they've worked a 90-hour week. When they finish work, they actually want to get home. Mm. They want to get away from all of that. They want to have some rest. Uh, they need to see their families. I mean, your family's up in, in Wigan. So, mm. you, you know, there are, there are different patterns of press. I, I, I don't buy into what has become with respect, a bit of a stereotype mm. in which, um, you know, the male MPs, are, are, particularly the older MPs, are always going to be predators of some kind. No, they're not. You know, most of them, most members of Parliament are decent human beings who are actually giving their lives to serve the country. And we need to encourage people to be willing to stand in all parties. Uh, but did you ever experience any inappropriate behaviour? from a, a minister or an MP who's, who's more powerful than you were at the time, that no, you didn't know how no, to deal no, with. No, 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 I mean, It may be that I come... Because I come from Liverpool, and uh, because when I entered the House, there were only 23 women. I mean, there are, what, 208 now? Mm. So it was a very different atmosphere. But it may be that I, knew, I very obviously knew how to look after myself. If anybody had ever tried anything, honestly, Ruth, I'd have probably emasculated them, and then they'd have had to so tell the story. So do you think now that maybe... Women I... don't know how to deal with this. Because we, you're hearing a lot of people yes. saying that. That's how it was in those days. We just learned how to deal with we, it. We learned we, how to we banter dealt with back. It. We dealt with it. But in, in any case, I think now there is no clear etiquette of how somebody makes a, a romantic approach. A hand on the knee may be an invitation. Suddenly everybody's saying, oh, this is unacceptable. Pardon me. If we do want to attract good people into politics, which mm. is what you were talking about, and we do want to clean up the image of politics, because as you rightly say, mo this is not most MPs and this is not what most MPs think is acceptable behaviour, then we have to deal with those cases where this is happening. And you know, as I do, that when those spreadsheets were being circulated with lists of names, it, most people in Westminster knew who should have been on that list sure, and who shouldn't. But that list... These are accepted practices Lisa, that have been allowed to go on Lisa, unchallenged, respect, and respect. it has to change. On that list, on that list, were a lot of ancient allegations. There were also a lot of consensual 
uh, relationships. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which are there completely were some different. Lies. Yeah. Even the press said some were lies, and there were a small number. Now the problem that I have is if everything's unacceptable, then you conflate the whole thing and you fail to deal with the small number. I agree. Small I, number. I, 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 agree I agree with you. I, You've got. 10,000 people with passes into the Palace of Westminster. You've got people working in all sorts of environments. By all means, and I would support this, the first day or within the first week, you have to have an induction programme and you're taught a whole range of issues, one of which should be the pr procedure for any bullying or harassment of any kind. But it has to include, if this is serious, if it's rape, and I've heard the word rape mm. flying around, as if it's a trivial issue, if it's rape, Police. I have to say, I think this is getting a bit ridiculous. MPs are highly, we're supposed to be at least, highly functioning human beings, good with people, good with emotions, know how people. to make good judgment calls. We people. are tasked with making decisions about whether this country goes to war. If we can't distinguish between politely asking somebody if they'd like to go for a drink and raping somebody in a private meeting, then this country's got a much bigger problem than anybody thought. And frankly, we can distinguish. This is part of the problem with saying that, well, why is that suddenly everything everything's too politically... Because not, because not everything is unacceptable, Edwina. And when you, can, when you say that, that this is, these are all the same sorts of allegations and that MPs aren't capable of distinguishing, what you're doing essentially yeah, is saying, saying we don't need to exactly be judged. The opposite. We don't need to be judged by normal standards. And we do, we are normal people no, and no, we no, should no. be judged by normal standards. Well, it's fine to ask someone politely to go for a drink. You know, it's not like... fine to grope somebody in a bar when they're telling you to stop it. When they're saying stop yes, it, I think you when stop. They say stop it. No, when they say stop it, you stop. But you don't, you don't grope people anyway, frankly. I mean, it True. just seems to me a fairly yeah, a world of incredible yeah. thing. Yeah. When I, when I've I got to for say stop at night to, to you two, I we're, uh, we're out of time. Meeting. It seems but, um, unbelievable. But...